everyone, it's Axel. So, I've been wanting to do one of these commentary style speed paint videos for a while now, but I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. However, Inanimate Insanity has been appearing on my view page a lot on TikTok, and it's making me feel really nostalgic for my middle school obsession with the series. So, I decided I really wanted to make some human designs for a bunch of the characters. Some general guidelines, I'll be doing a batch of five here, and I give myself roughly an hour and a half to complete each of these. This will be contestants only, so no hosts, like me phone, me pad, etc. I actually haven't caught up with Inanimate Insanity Inventational, I don't know. I watched like the first two episodes and I just kind of lost interest. Maybe if this gets enough attention, I'll binge watch the rest of Inanimate Insanity Inventational and I'll like do a part two, including some of those characters. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> The way I decided who I was going to draw was by putting every character into one of those random wheel spinner thingies. You know what I'm talking about? Like the wheel spinny th Yeah, wheel decide. Wheel decide. That's the name of the website I use. <laughs> so first up, I got Apple. I feel like Apple came out the most generic out of all my designs. Definitely the one I'm the least proud of. When I was younger, I would give her this sort of country girl kind of look, which looking back doesn't suit her at all. I gave her a flannel shirt, which I decided to keep in this design because I didn't really have any other ideas. I really hope that doesn't come across as too country, because that's just not really Apple at all. <laughs> not a lot more to say, honestly. Like I said, her design is very generic. I, I was honestly really tempted to redo this all over again, but I didn't have any, like, different ideas. Looking back, I probably should have rewatched Inanimate Insanity before starting this, considering I haven't watched the entire series since middle school, but oh well, it's, it's too late, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> All I remember about Apple is her rivalry to friendship with Marshmallow, and like her getting possessed by both. That's it, that's all I know, that's all I know. I used to draw her with her little apple stem leaf, uh, apple leaf, is it just called an apple leaf? Sure. Her apple leaf, it was, but it would be drooping over her eye because I wanted her to look goth. I wanted her to look emo, and God, I'm really glad I, I didn't decide to put any sort of goth or like emo aesthetic into this design because it completely doesn't suit Apple at all. I also tried to give her a apple body type. I, I'm not sure how well that reads. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the next one. I, I want to stop thinking about this apple. <laughs> the next one I got was Bo. She technically shouldn't count because she's not a contestant in season two, but whatever. She's prominent enough, and this is my video, and, and my rules, my rules, yeah. <laughs> so originally, I was just gonna go with the generic Valley Girl Bo design, but that was boring, and I wasn't feeling the creative juices flowing when trying to think of a design. But but, but, <laughs> when I was looking up references for her, I saw this one really specific fan art of her with her whole chair obsessing thing, which totally reads to me as Rar XD random humor. And thus, Bo became a huge team kid. Technically, the more I thought about it, it would make more sense that considering she stops the whole chair quirk after she dies, that in show, she should have a scene girl phase and design throughout season one and technically season three, but that's absolutely not the real bow and I'll stand by that. It doesn't count. <laughs> and then after she dies and shows back up in season two, as a ghost, she should be more valley girl-esque to show that she's no longer a scene kid. But I really, really wanted to design a funny little scene ghost girl. so. Forget it. Forget Maybe one day I'll come back and redesign them to work within that concept, but that's it for another day. To get back to the actual speed paint you're watching right now, the actual design! Wow, look at that! <laughs> I gave her one of those big stripey hair extensions and really big poofy fluffy hair that comes out into two big ponytails on both sides to represent her actual bow body. I was gonna say head, but it's just her body, isn't it? With her being a ghost, it was pretty limiting on how much clothes I could give her, but hey, that meant I didn't have to draw shoes, so it's a win. I stuck at just one candy bracelet instead of her entire wrist being decked out with 
so many mainly because I, I was I was lazy I was lazy I was lazy I drew one candy bracelet it's fine when I came to coloring, I decided to break the pure pink ghost thing just a little bit to throw in some pastel blues and yellows to make the colors pop. Which accidentally made her look like the soft fuzzy man from the Aim Kid animation, but hey, I like how the final piece turned out. She's great, I love her with the variety and colors instead of the pure pink, so I'm sticking with it. Here's the final bow. Which, by the way, you should totally check out Aim Kid when you're done with this video. She's a super talented animator and she deserves all the attention that she gets. And next is Suitcase. Suitcase used to be my favorite character when I was 14 in middle school, but now I'm not the biggest fan of her. I, I don't know why. I'm, I don't know why. She's fine, don't get me wrong. But there's just a lot more characters I prefer. I also used to really want her to win season 2, but now out of the remaining contestants as of this video, I'm really, really rooting hard for Lightbulb to win, who, by the way, is my favorite character, which, by the way, spoiler warning for this video you're watching right now, I didn't end up pulling her. Tragic. Best girl will make an appearance on my channel one day, mark my words. As for now, back back to suitcase. Wow, I, I'm drawing suitcase. This design feels also generic, not as much as Apple. I feel like I could have done something more interesting, but nah, it's not bad. <laughs> I wanted to give her overalls, but I didn't know how to go about it without her just looking like overalls and a t-shirt. So I went to my good old reliable friend Pinterest and looked up overalls and found this hoodie overall combo and decided, yeah. That would suit suitcase well enough. Suit suitcase. That that was not that was not intentional pun. I'm. <laughs> By the way, going to Pinterest for outfit inspirations when you're feeling art blocked is great. Couldn't recommend it enough. I go on there for fun just to look on outfits sometimes. I gave her big hair and tried to make it look squarish to emulate like a suitcase shape, which kind of worked. But I think that her hair turned out looking kind of silly. I was just gonna cover her overall straps to represent her yellow things? What do you call those yellow things on a suitcase? I, I don't know what they're called. Little whatevers. Straps? Straps. Suitcase straps. I don't know, something. But considering how she opens herself like a suitcase multiple times in the show, and that doesn't really make much sense when it comes to overalls unless she like unbuckles her overalls and put stuff in it, which feels weird. I thought that a backpack would make more sense. Not sure how much those yellow straps on her come across as a backpack, but it's a backpack. You can see a little bit of- it, it's a backpack. I guess I should also address this here. When it comes to drawing armless contestants, in case I do this more in the future, I won't be drawing them with arms in human form since it ruins part of the dialogue. I don't know if they're like amputees or in the inanimate insanity human universe or just object show human universe in general it's just a really common birth defect but i guess that's up for viewer interpretation but it, here's suitcase Lo lovely chubby little girl i love her fan i was especially excited for when i got him since i already had a design in mind for him fan feels like a very straightforward human design Inanimate Insanity fanboy who's the world's biggest nerd, it translates pretty easy. Give him a hoodie and sweatpants, this man is ready to meet you at the nearest Comic Con and awkwardly ask for cosplay photos of you and him together, all while sweating like a pig. I gave him an undercut ponytail combo, very trendy, and very heavily dyed hair that is absolutely fried to no end. His hair is gonna fall out by the time he hits like 25. Though I imagine hair in this world would be normally unnaturally uncolored, I would like to think that Fan is an exception and he has naturally brown hair, which he has to bleach to no end to get to, to dye this like vibrant red. Probably cause his own hair too. Like I, it, like I said, seconds away from falling out, he does not care. Something I was especially proud of was the idea of adding an Ida bag, which for those who don't know, are these bags that have clear little compartments in the front to display pins or whatever other merch you have of a certain character, series, artist, actor, etc. 
jammed it full of inanimate insanity pins. Specifically, I wanted to only include season one related stuff, but I only realized after I completely finished this image and was writing this script that I accidentally gave him a season two pin in the Eda bag. But it's fine. I, maybe he, he probably added that like in between competitions because he was so excited to be in the show. It, it's intentional. Also gave him some acne, which in retrospect, I feel like I should have added more because I, I want this man to look greasy. You touch a man's hand and you're, you touch him, your hand is wet. He <laughs> He's just a greasy little nerd ball and I love him. Gave him some more pins on his hoodies, including some pride stuff and, and a homestuck pin because I thought it was oh so funny making the fanboy character a homestuck. I wanted to class pect him too and give him like class pecked pins to go along with it. But despite being in the homesuck fan base for three years, I never understood how class pecting worked. So anyway, here's the boy. D don't look at his shoes for too long. I do not like how they turned out. Last, but certainly not least, we got Taco, the British character. I don't, she's the only British character, right? Suitcase is like Australian, right? I, I don't know. I would imagine her season one counterpart to look vastly different, very quirky and colorful. I'm not gonna be designing it here, obviously, but to contrast that idea, I wanted to make her very lacking in colors, except for the stand-ins of her tomato and lettuce, because I feel like without those, she would be completely unrecognizable. You can see in the speed paint, I originally gave her a black suit, but changed it last minute because I thought I was giving off a lot of unnamed politician vibes. So I changed it to a similar beige to her taco shell. I chopped all her hair off. I like to imagine in season one, she had a bit of a mental breakdown and she decided to chop off all her hair and just, just irrationally, she, she was like, I'm fucked. But she decided to keep it and went for a more masculine get up as to make it look like it was intentional. Like she's, oh, my hair, I cut that off on purpose. I'm trying a new look, you know? I feel like I should have given her fancy slip-ons instead of the high heels that I gave her, but you know what? She's looking very hashtag girl boss. You know what? She basically invented gaslight gatekeep girl boss. Like she deserves it. She deserves the girl boss look. She also has a tiny microphone on her tux pocket because I thought her just wearing a headset all the time to talk to Mike would look weird and out of place. Granted, she could just pull it out, and she doesn't have to wear a microphone at all times, but I like the little spy motif of her having that little thing on her. Is there a name for those little pocket microphones? Yeah, I couldn't find a reference for that. I don't know if that's what they look like in real life, but whatever. It's close enough. The drawing is done. I gave her a bunch of freckles for no other reason than I thought it would look cute. Maybe to represent like little taco dimple things. You know what I'm talking about? How tacos are like bumpy. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> I gave her permanent sharp fail teeth because she does have sharp teeth in her design, but only occasionally. But I think if she had sharp teeth all the time, it would be very cool because I really, really like it when characters have sharp teeth. It is like peak character design for me. I love her very much. She's very pretty. I would love to give her a smooch. And there she is. Wow, Taco. And that with that, it's the very last design for this video. And that's all of them that I'm doing for this video. Like I said, maybe if this gets traction, I will make a part two. Whether that be with inanimate insanity characters, just more season one characters, more maybe some of the third season, some of the first season. Maybe I'll even do BFB eventually, maybe like a combination of the two. I don't ask for other object shows. I don't <laughs> I don't watch any other object shows except occasionally Oso, open source objects. But that's only because I took part in it a couple of times. Anyway, thank you for watching so much. Mwah. I love you. Bye.